Hello, I'm Father Jeffrey Brook. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Jefferson City, and I'm happy to help us continue our catechetical series on the nature and role of the bishop in the Roman Catholic Church. Particularly, I'd like to reflect on the following question. What is the relationship between the bishops and the Pope? At the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says to the apostles, to go therefore to all nations and make, dis make disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we call the divine mission that Jesus asks the apostles and therefore the whole church to carry out his mission of the proclamation of the gospel to the whole world. And I've got to think that for the apostles standing on that hill outside of Jerusalem, that's a pretty big task. In fact, it's, I think it's still a pretty big task for us today. What the apostles did, though, was they began to leave Jerusalem and to go throughout the whole world. And as they arrived in various cities and regions, they established local and particular churches. And the apostles were seen as the heads of those particular local churches. And they were referred to as the bishops of those places. And that's the structure that on some level has come down to us today to help us continue this great mission that Christ has entrusted to us. And so bishops today have authority and responsibility to care for the souls of the people in a particular place, to carry out this divine mission in a particular or local church. And their authority is extended to that place which we call a diocese. But when the apostles sent out to all these cities, and as the bishops exist in all these dioceses around the world today, they don't do so alone. They always remain united. And together we refer to them as the College of Bishops. And that College of Bishops has one visible sign of unity, which comes also from the words of Christ when he said to Peter, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And so the successor of Peter, who is the Bishop of Rome, who today is Pope Francis, remains that visible sign of the unity of all the bishops together. But the Bishop of Rome the successor of Peter, the Pope, also enjoys a universal authority. So not only does he have authority in Rome, he has authority throughout the whole church. And this is really important because it allows us to, to maintain our unity for the College of Bishops. So while each bishop has authority and responsibility in his particular diocese, the Pope has authority and responsibility for the whole world. And it's a really mutually beneficial relationship, because if you think about it, the Pope can't be in every place at once. He can't be all over the world. As much as he might want to fly everywhere, he can't cover every single place and know every single person and take responsibility for every soul in the, in the world. So he has these bishops who are his collaborators around the world, helping him to carry out this mission we have all received from Christ to proclaim the gospel and to make disciples. And so the bishops around the world, in our diocese and everywhere else, they need the Holy Father and the Holy, in the sense that he provides unity and gives us direction. And the Holy Father needs all the bishops in the sense that they can become his messengers, his men on the front lines all throughout the world, carrying out this great mission from Christ. Some people wonder, well, when did this really start, this whole idea of the papacy? Isn't it just some sort of creation later along the line, along the lines in history? And that's just not true. Because we look at the, the history of the church, and we have this, for instance, a great letter from St. Clement, the third successor of Peter, who writes a letter to the Corinthians. He's the bishop of Rome, but he writes a letter to the Corinthians, demonstrating that he already understood that he, as bishop of Rome, as the successor of Peter, had universal authority and jurisdiction. And so, the, so that structure has carried itself throughout the history of the church and continues to benefit uh, all of us. And it is always meant uh, to be a response to that divine mission. So it's about how can we do it most effectively? And that's how we could enter into the question of, well, what's the role of an archbishop? What's the role of a cardinal? How do they fit into this whole structure of bishops in a particular church, and a pope who enjoys, enjoys universal authority. Well, archbishops are bishops of a particular diocese, which we call an archdiocese, or a metropolitan see, and their job is to help to organize 
the bishops of a particular region or area. For certainly we know that the needs of the people and of the church and the circumstances and situations in societies are very different throughout the world from Missouri to Africa to Asia or South America. And so a archbishop helps to organize and motivate the other bishops of his region to collaborate and cooperate with one another so they can most effectively carry out their jobs and responsibilities in a particular region, recognizing that you know we in the Diocese of Jefferson City perhaps aren't as different from the Diocese of Springfield, Cape Girardeau, or St. Louis, or Kansas City, St. Joseph. So Archbishop Carlson can help all the bishops of Missouri to be organized and to work together as one, recognizing that our needs uh, of our particular churches are uh, different perhaps than, let's say, somewhere in Brazil or in, uh, in Kenya. Bishop Gatos, or soon to be Bishop Elect McKnight, still maintains authority in the local church of the Diocese of Jefferson City or any bishop in any other diocese around the world, but the Archbishop helps them to work together and to collaborate again so we can most effectively carry out this mission we've received from Christ. And cardinals, in a particular way, are called to be collaborators with the Pope. So they serve on various committees and they serve as consultors for the Pope to bring back what they have learned from their various cities and dioceses around the world and their countries and regions around the world and to bring that to the Holy Father so that he can uh, most effectively carry out his job of being the, the shepherd of the whole world and exercising that universal authority. And so they do that practically, like I said, through various committees that they serve on uh, here in Rome and also, and most especially and importantly, in the election of a new pope, that the cardinals are the ones who gather to elect a new pope. So hopefully that's a little bit clearer to understand that a bishop has a particular church, just like the apostles had particular authority in a city or region where they established various churches, and then the pope enjoys a universal authority, but that they must exist and cooperate together, that they help to serve each other, and it's all geared towards the proclamation of the gospel and most effectively carrying out the divine mission.